Hi, everybody. El Ingalls here, and we are on our next to last speaker for the day. Um, this is the Pressure Free Leadership Conference for June 2023. I'm your host, El Ingalls. I'm the creator of the Pressure Free Method. And uh, can't wait to bring Stephen out here. Stephen and I are in an international group together. We, so we've known each other for a while in this group. Like we see each other's names, right? Right. So I was putting together the, the times of all of the speakers for the conference a few days ago. And, um, and the names, and for some reason, instead of Stephen Underwood, I wrote Stephen Wonderland. <laughs> so there's an example of like, as a classical musician, I really dislike making any mistakes. Like that's probably my big thing after what Mort just shared with us. Dr. Mort Orman was our last speaker. So go back and see that if you haven't seen it, if you're on the recordings. You know, we, was talking about, we were talking about anger for me, making a mistake so i actually made a mistake with your name which is is just like oh no <laughs> really awful thing for me i feel very ashamed right so i have to i have to change that up right away and i made it i smiled and we joked about it in our little chat which was so fun but steven i'm so grateful to have you here he and i and i want to appreciate i want to share about your leadership for a moment because you and i have been going back on some ideas and um and I really love that. And I know that you're really passionate about what you do. And I'm excited to bring you out here. And so, um, so yeah, I'd love you to share a little bit. You have a fascinating background, even how you were born. It's fascinating. Like, you have such a fascinating background. And so feel free to introduce yourself as you wish. And then we'll just start to dive into some of the beautiful content you have for us. Uh, I live in Washington, D.C. I've lived here now for the last past 13 years with my wife, Misty Underwood, of 28 years. We have six beautiful children. And uh, I, um, I'm an international uh, born and raised child. My father served in the uh, United States Air Force, uh, two tours in Vietnam. We lost him in August of 2021. And uh, he was a big proponent of my life as I was telling uh, Al and uh, the other speakers that gathered uh, for introduction. Uh, my father not only was the progenitor of the seed that, you know, or the carrier of the seed that uh, produced me, his own two hands delivered me into this world. And so uh, I had no other hands uh, touch me or handle me as I came into this uh, world that we call life. And so uh, I was born in Torreon de Autos, Madrid, Spain, I am a dual citizen, uh, possess both United States and uh, Spanish uh, citizenship as well. And so uh, that international kind of waters is uh, where I'm uh, familiar and where I'm, more, I'm most comfortable. And so, uh, but uh, the work that I do uh, now and how it came about was actually uh, a near death experience. I was working for a large uh, construction firm as a warehouse logistics supervisor, we were actually upgrading a, uh, a coal plant, changing it from coal to uh, more energy efficient, but the environment was making me sick and it made me sick to where I was uh, having things and issues going uh, on with my body that I didn't even know I was aware of. And so uh, I went home early this one particular day and actually, uh, fell asleep behind the wheel of my car and uh, was heading headlong in front of a Mack truck. And if it would have hit me, I would have just into the uh, railroad and would have gotten hit by a CXX uh, railroad coming down the track as well. And so when I was laying in the hospital because I had uh, certain uh, things that were happening with my, uh, my breathing, my bronchial and my uh, uh, respiratory system, and so I was laying in the hospital. I was like, this can't be my lot in life. This can't be, you know, the way that I'm supposed to, you know, live my life. And so uh, I began to just uh, reassess some things, revamp some things about my life and things of that nature. And uh, me and my wife got together, mastermind. And so we came up with our own business. We first started out as a uh, as a wellness uh, e-commerce firm. And as I began to deal with... Uh, professionals here in the DMV area of District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia, I began to notice that majority of them were, you know, dealing with anxiety, uh, fatigue, uh, burnout, 
and stress. And so I went back to my wife because I was having almost kind of like a, a um, issue with uh, connecting with people, which I don't normally have. And so she said, Stephen, she said, maybe you might want to, you know, work backwards instead of forwards. I said, what do you mean? She said, you know, you come from international waters. Why don't you uh, work that way and then work forward towards, you know, getting more U.S. Uh, clients and clientele. And so I did that. And how that happened and came about L was uh, we had a Chinese woman that appeared out of nowhere to our establishment, found us through uh, Yelp or through Google search. Okay. And this this was a this was a mainland Chinese woman, older woman. And now anybody who knows anything about the Indo-Asiatic world, especially China or Chinese, two things about them. Number one, if they don't know you, they will not do business with you. Number two, if you're not in their circle, they will not do business with you. So just the fact that she found me, and then on top of that, me being an African-American male, and then my wife and I, we are in a uh, intercultural uh, relationship and a marriage. And uh, when she when she appeared at my our establishment, our kids were outside, and the woman and she was with her grand uh, her granddaughter, and she looked uh, and rolled down her window. She said, "Is this you, kind multi?" I said, uh, "Yes, ma'am." And she she parked her car, got out the car, and she said, "Are you sure?" I said, and then it was dawn on me. It's like Stephen, she's uh. She's China, she's mainland Chinese. She said, my brain said, kick in, you speak Chinese, make her feel at home. I took a woman from who was uh, at a high state of, of just like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, I'm just appearing at this man, you know, establishment and I don't know him, he don't know. And I saw my emotional and my cognitive kid, you know, the language speak to her to bring down her, you know, her defenses. I said, ni hao, you know, she said, and she said, you know, oh, ni hao, ni am I. And um, you speak Chinese, you speak my language. I said, she, she, she came in, sat down, and long story short, uh, she sat in our establishment and she ordered almost close to 2,800 to 3,500 something dollar uh, worth of products from us. And it was all because I was able to operate from a higher level of spiritual intelligence. And uh, some of your speakers uh, spoke on some uh, some key issues that uh, uh, like Ryan, you know, him speaking about ADH. When I was first, uh, you know, we made the transition from overseas when my dad got out of the military and coming back here to the United States, you know, uh, I had to, uh, you know, uh, reassess for school and come to find out that I struggled with ADHD and at the time, I think back then it wasn't called ADHD. It was called something else back in the early uh, latter 70s, early 80s. And uh, they was wanting to put me on all these type of uh, prescribed medications and all these different type of things. And they told my mother that, you know, oh, he's not reading at a proficient level. And she was like, you know, look back at me and then look at them. You know, the educator said, who, him? She said, you don't, you don't understand something about my son. My son is able to learn, listen to me, anything he wants to learn that interests him. <laughs> one, of the first, one of the first books that I mastered was the Bible. I loved uh, different types of philosophy, religion, and different things of that nature. I read the uh, Bible all the way through. I read the Quran. I read other uh, works that had to deal with other religions like Taoism, Shintoism, and different things of that nature. And so when I found my niche of spiritual intelligence and I was like, you know, and I thought about what my, my wife said to me, I said, I think I have something here because so many times we, uh, we step into like with the situation with the Chinese woman, we step into situations, we step into cultural, we step in, whether it be corporate, whether it be business or whether it be outside of this, whether it be relational or relationship, we step into things that we're not really fully, uh, fully operating at the, uh, like what Dr. Uh, uh, Mort said, we're not operating at the top efficiency of our programming. And the height, and the height of uh, our programming as human beings 
is our spiritual intelligence. And so what I do, simply do L, is I help uh, professionals, executives, C-suite executives, and business owners. I help them operate from crowning their enlightened intelligence through transformational change. And the way I do that is I help them tap into uh, a model that uh, I have come up with that we call and that uh, our corporation has, uh, has uh, worked on, which is called the Spiritual Intelligence Alchemy System. And it works off of four T's. Uh, and uh, the four T's are transformation, transfiguration, translation, and transcendence. And I'm so writing, we do, I'm writing those down. These are great. So transformation. Transformation, okay. transfiguration, mm -hmm. translation, and transcendence. Again, transformation, transfiguration, translation, and transcendence. Which I and, either, and each one of these, each one of these things, <laughs> transformation, it starts with a growth mindset. It starts with changing, as Dr. Mort said, changing the way that you perceive what you think you know, because what you think you actually know, you don't know. And what you don't know, what you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. So you have to be an open, you have to be an open-minded person that who is not scared or, or frightened or intimidated and not, and not easily manipulated uh, to gaining new knowledge. You know, there's a there's an antiquity saying that, you know, people, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. It's not saying that you don't have knowledge that you don't know. It's, it's asking what potential knowledge that I lack that could potentially be detriment and dangerous to me to where it is like with uh, Dr. Moore, until he knew what the, what the uh, uh, virus, the anger virus was, until he, until he tapped into the programming system that was in his own framework. And my talk is about, uh, L, is about reframing failure of how to use spiritual, how to use spiritual intelligence to deal with uh, performance anxiety and, and to create or foster a, a positive uh, way to create a self-narrative that is workable for you. But when you stand into, when you stand in, and you know, a lot of the speakers spoke about standing in our truth, standing in our authenticity, standing in our essence. When you stand in the essence, because I've done a research on this, do you not know? Do you not know, or may 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 not know that eighty percent of our world, eighty to ninety percent of our world that works in corporate America comes from the space Indo Indo Asiatic space of a spiritual makeup that works in corporate America. Out of that eighty or ninety percent, about fifty to sixty percent, or seventy percent, are women. So what is this letting us know? Women have a high intuitive, we call it, and we know it as intuitive. Uh, back in the day, the older women I grew up with, they used to call it mother wit. Women have a high sense of mother wit or spiritual intelligence that if tapped into, you, you know, like with uh, 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 men, you know, and dealing with our, our wives or dealing with our daughters, dealing with our nieces, our aunts, they used to know things before we knew them. And they'd be like, you know, what did you do that for? Like my mother, every time I would do something and I didn't think she would know about it, she'd be like, Stephen, what did you just do? I'm like, how she know? How she know? Because she was tapped into, and uh, I think it was Vanessa, uh, the uh, your uh, friend, the uh, one that was uh, South African. She said that, you know, uh, a frequency, there's a frequency, there are things that are far uh, 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 outside of us, but it's far more greater what's going on inside of us than what's taking place on the outside of us. We have been so educated, and as uh, Dr. Moore said, we've been so brainwashed to think that one way of learning is like learning in a brick and mortar uh, uh, wall of a building or a school. No, I learned my different uh, way of learning. And I, I didn't come into my learning style until I was like in, in my late 20s, 
25 or 30s. And so when I discovered this, it was like a it was like a epiphany. It was like a light bulb went off for me. And so the first thing we do with uh, we do with uh, CEOs and and uh, professionals, we help them try uh, tap into that transformational part of them that has not been discussed about, that has been taboo, that has been woo woo. But your spiritual intelligence don't confuse spiritual intelligence with spiritual practice. What I'm talking about is your, is that everywhere you go, like when we talked in our it's, you know, anywhere you go, you take you along with you. How you in how you in one space, you ought to be the same way that you are with your friends. You ought to be the same way you are with your business uh, uh, professionals, but yet with a with a posture of what uh, Vanessa talked about, and uh, even what Leo talked about, with a posture of knowing that hey, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm comfortable with who I am. You know, I've taken myself through that transformational uh, uh, portion of myself. Because like with me, when I wake up early in the morning, and I love what uh, uh, Jeff said, early in the morning is the most sacred time. Don't allow anything to disturb it. Don't allow anything to bother that frequency that is you and you alone for you to. And I take myself through a ritual. I go through my emotional state. I go through my cognitive. I go through my physiological. I go through even my physical and I even deal with my spiritual. I allow them, each one of them to respond. Like I take myself emotionally, you know, are you with me? And I allow it to respond back to me to say whether yay or nay that I'm, you know, and somebody else talked about being present. Sometimes we, you know, we can be present for other people, but how much and how many oftentimes are we present for ourselves? Right. And so, and uh, talking about that self-care that, uh, you know, uh, Kathy talked about one of the highest self-care is taking care of that spiritual, that crowning of yourself and aligning that with yourself to where it then as you transformate yourself, then you're ready to go into the stage of transfiguration of yourself. And this comes down, transfiguration has to do with how not only you're changing the outward physiological part of you, but how are you changing your emotional, your cognitive, your spiritual, those things that are not visible to the naked eye? How, and uh, Derek said, how do you want others to perceive you? And I love another person that is a part of our group through uh, uh, Catherine B. Roy, uh, Alicia Asali. She says, how is it that you want, how do is it that you want your brand? Because your brand is more than just a logo is that no, it's about when people hear about you before you even enter the room. And this what's and this is what transfiguration is about. Transfiguration is about is about presence. How do you enter a room? And didn't Leo just talk about how you posture yourself, how you're looking ahead? And my grandfather used to always tell me that, Stephen, don't look down, always look straight ahead. And when you speak to anybody, whether male or female, look them eye to eye, because that way that you're letting that person know where you come from, where you've been, and not only that, where you're headed. And so when we help them transfigurate, then we're, we're able to translate them. And translate, translate is like an alchemist, taking one state of an element and translating it into something. And uh, Dr. Uh, Jordan talked about being better. So I help people trans, transform, transfigurate, then translate them not only to where they're from, but I help translate them to what it is to the better self that they want to be and to become. Because your circumstance, your situation, your uh, you know, uh, whether you lost a job or whether you come out of divorce, it has nothing to do, with, that has nothing to do with whether or not the person that you choose to be. John Maxwell said it like this. He said, life is 10% about what happens to us. 90% about how we respond to it. And so it gets into that. And then after we help you translate yourself from where you're at to where it is you really ultimately want to be, then we help help you take you, your company, or whatever it is that you, you're working on, whatever project, we help you transcend that. Because if you're not able to transcend past the place of where you've been translated, what good is that? So you need, and, and in humanity, we're coming into a higher state. I call it spiritual ascension. 
businesses are going through it. Uh, uh, corporations are going through it. Our society has been through it. Do we you know with this pandemic, we have come through transformation. We have come through transfiguration. We have come through translation. Now, ultimately, what we have to ask ourselves, not only as uh, professionals and as uh, executives and as business owners, but what we have to ask ourselves individually is, where do we transcendently want to be ultimately as a society and as human beings? As we collectively work on this thing together called life, and life is nothing more than living in freedom every day. It didn't, isn't that what Derek talked about? Freedom, free, yeah. dumb, domain. The dominion, taking rulership, taking ownership of who you are as an individual. And that comes with transformation. If you're not transformed, again, as, as I said, you know, during our, uh, our discussion, during the speaker's thing, if you're, if, you, if you're one way at a state, as a, and it doesn't have to be a CEO or a business owner, if you as an individual, a human being, if you're nasty and you're uh, like with Dr. Moore, if you're angry at this one juncture or stage of life, guess what? You're going to be that same way at another uh, business, at another corporation, and you're going to be like that for the rest of your life until you're willing to change the frequency, the programming of what it is that your system, your body, your emotional, your cognitive, your physiological, and even your spiritual state, until you're willing, what the saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. And that's what happened for me with, uh, with uh, Catherine B. Roy. I was tired of my life going in this rut. I was tired of making excuses. I was tired of just spinning my wheels. And I was like, I was at a place in my life where, where life had dealt me, you know, uh, 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 such a, a hand and a deck that listen, either we, either we work with this deck that we have or, you know, nobody else is, nobody else is coming, Stephen, to save you. Either you, either you look and dig deep inwardly within yourself and transformate yourself, transfigurate yourself, translate yourself. And now I'm ready to transcend. That is, I'm ready to, I'm ready to show up in the full authenticity of my life. What you get is what you see. It, and, 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 and when I say that, I'm not saying to the point, to the degree that you speak everything that is emotionally, cognitively, and physically going on inside of you. This is where uh, you have to be emotionally intelligent. And Derek talked about that too. Like a, a friend I have who's in Italy, his name is Giacomo Natelli. I wanted to better communicate with him. And then again, it's like, it dawned on me, cognitive, Stephen, you already have the gift of languages already within you. Unlock it further. Learn Italian to where you can speak to your Italian friend in his language. And now I'm speaking, I'm speaking at a whole other different frequency. I'm speaking at a whole other different language, linguistic. And so uh, when you free yourself in that type of way, uh, L, it leaves you space to not only uh, be careful of what, of what you put out, you are very careful. You are very, very careful and adamant about what comes in because a great antiquity uh, writer said, King Solomon, he said, a man who have no rule over his own soul, spirit, spiritu, is like a city without wall. What is he saying by that? He's saying, listen, a man who has no, no gate, who has no guard over his own spirit, over his own uh, uh, essence of being, Anything will show enough, get in. And guess what? Anything show enough will come out. And this is what this uh, pandemic and even post pandemic has proven to us. And uh, Dr. Moore talked about anger. You know, there's a rise. I think there's a 75 to 85% rise in a, a thing, a term called IED, intermittent explosive disorder, where people are getting angry for no reason and don't even know why. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting, you know. First of all, we got a couple of things that have come in here. Karen says, that is so good. Or that is good. Love the spiritual process behind the four words and truth. And the word, the, the translation, I think this is interesting because you brought up languages. I'm coaching a young man right now. He is a traveling nurse. He already has two, I think he has three languages under his belt, but 
he wants to travel more, but he wants to travel and actually talk in the language of wherever he goes so he can tr really immerse in. And so he's, he's working on that right now. The idea of us um, being more open, not just in the case of learning another, say, foreign language, but even in how we speak with others within our own communities and, and making sure that translation is clean. Because again, it comes back to that meta communication. What are you saying with your body versus what are you saying with your words? What are you saying with your tone of voice? I, I just really, I'm kind of hooking on that translation word for a moment. I just think it's interesting yeah. you brought it forward. And, I, and, and it's interesting that you say that, and it all goes back to the four, the four C's that you and I identified with when we were going through the speaker introduction. Connection, communication, collaboration. And then it comes down to, you know, uh, you know, cooperation. And then there's a fifth C that we never, we never talk about. And that is consideration. Can I consider you? And this is where, this is, again, this is where you're operating off of the height of spiritual intelligence. Because so often we have been in a society, me, 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 my, my, my. And then now this generation Z and generation Y, oh, you worked hard for something. And so I want to lazily, and I want to, and uh, Jeff spoke about accountability. I want to, I want to now live off of what you have worked hard for and not and not lift a finger and do nothing about that. That is truly a poor existence of, of life. And not only of life, but it's a poor existence of again, a person who has no rule over their own selves is like a city without walls. Anything showing up can get in, and everything, everything will show up, come out. And so uh, we're about helping, again, we're about helping corporations, companies, and even individuals. We do, we do, uh, we do individual coaching, we do group coaching, but we're, we, we're, we're really interested in helping uh, society and culture of making this transition into this, into this ascension phase of our existence as humanity. Because if we don't get it, if we don't get this right, L, whether on a business level, whether on a, a personal level, a private level, a professional level, and definitely a public level, we are doomed for failure. If we do not, if we do not take this transition, this this transition of, of, of ascension, of operating at a higher level of our language, which is spiritual intelligence, where our spiritual intelligence houses all of our emotional, our cognitive, our physical and even our social and cultural intelligence yes. and being able to move in and out of, move in and out of and being stealthy, so to speak, or being, or, or better yet, being like a special agent, a CIA agent, a FBI agent, knowing how to move in and out of cultures, move in and out of, of spheres, of, uh, of arenas and being able to do it. And again, you don't have to know everything, but you should know something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't I have to know everything. Yeah. I love it. And I love too the idea when you even think about that, that for me, I've always viewed myself as a connector of cultures. So because I had a business degree and a music degree, I could connect those things so that there was never any strife in my orchestra, in my board, in my like there wasn't the usual strife you see in those, the artists versus the business people versus, there was always this, you know, creating connection. So connection, communication, collaboration, cooperation, consideration. Like those are some C's that everybody can take forward here from this talk. And I'm so glad that you were able and willing to come in and share today. And after us knowing each other for a couple of years now and then getting to collaborate has been really great, Stephen. Thanks so much. Yeah. And I thank you so much, Elle, and I've enjoyed every single one of the uh, speakers that have spoke before me. I mean, it just, uh, it, you know, it's like I received, a, I mean, just a large, huge beam of sun ray today, and, <laughs> and the flower of my mind just opened it's been up. incredible. It's, I mean, yeah. when it speaks to your leadership, you've been here the entire day, and notice how you easily could refer, like, to Kathy, to Mort, to, you know, you just were able to, to Leela, to Vanessa, to... You know, we're, it's, it was just really beautiful. So I appreciate that. And, um, and we're going to move to our next speaker now. So thank yeah. you, Stephen.
Thank you. Grazie mille. Grazie mille.